Now, my next guest will be well known to you, even if you don't know who she is. She does many of the voices in Spitting Image, and hers was the voice singing The Crying Game in the film when Jay Davidson was pretending to sing it herself, or himself, whichever you prefer. Singer and impressionist, Kate Robbins. Hello, Kate, how are you? Hi. Hello, Kate. Have a seat. <laughs> now, I must feel a bit frustrating for you, actually, because a lot of the things that you've been doing recently, you're not really acknowledged physically for oh. it, you know. Oh, physically. Ooh. You're behind the scenes, you know. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you can't be a shrinking violet, you know, like poor old Rosemary is. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's very shy. She's I great, isn't she? She's great. I, said, I just watched her. She's brilliant. I said to her during the day, I said, try and project yourself. Don't I know, be, she's, don't be so, sitting she's in the so corner. shy, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think I'm known uh, mostly for my voices on Spitty Image, the royals. I do all the female puppets. But um, one of the, the, the strange things about Spitty Image is that um, an old lady I used to go and visit, uh, she said, are you still doing that Spitting Image? She said, oh, yeah. When I said, uh, yes, Kitty, I am, she said, ooh, I don't know how you pull all them faces. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, well, they say, they I think she thinks that I'm sort of dressing up as a... Sorry. They say, actually, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm just thinking about something. I mean, they say that that's going to stop, the spitting image. Is that well, true? spitting image, it's been a lot in the papers about it stopping, but uh, it's actually a, it's a heavy rumour. We've still got another series in the autumn, so we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Watch you, this space, as they you, say. Is, is it mainly the royals that you do on spinning? Oh, I do all the female ones, um, apart from the Queen Mother, which is done by a man. My husband and I. Do and I. My, well, that's the Queen, you see, Jerry. <laughs> yes. And I was over here the other week, and I must say I had a very nice time, thank you. And uh, I do the Queen, and... Um, Philip, come to bed, quickly, come on. Um, and I do um, Diana. Now, the funny thing about Diana was that when I first started doing her voice, I just did like a yuppie like that, you know, like a sloan, uh, like that. And then um, I sort of heard her speak, you know, because she started making more speeches now. Yes. And she's got a really nice kind of, uh, it's, it's sort of a back of the throat type voice, I thought. It's really quite nice. Mm. And Fergie, I just do her sort of, come on, call me ginger pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I just do this funny snorting noise. I don't know why. I don't suppose she does that. But you've got to make up things, you see. You've got to sort of, you've got to make up things. So often, you know, you don't have a clue what a character sounds like. So you just, right. you just make up a little thing like the... <laughs> Oh, sorry. It's like, uh, it's like Mike, what do they call Mike Yarwood? You Mike Yarwood, oh. I'm, remember, remember he yeah. did Harold Wilson laughing. He invented, oh, that's right. he invented, he invented Harold No one had ever heard Harold Wilson laugh, Harold Wilson they? didn't laugh. He doesn't laugh, I don't think. No, but everybody thought that Harold Wilson, and then uh, Harold Wilson started laughing like that yeah, because Mike Yarwood did. Yeah, it's a funny old thing. What do you do if Princess Di, when you did hear her, did you change? Or did you stay with yeah, the caricature Yeah, I, I did voice? actually change because I, I like, do like to get it right if I can. It's like when I met Princess Anne threw that in there when I met Princess Anne. Huh? Princess Anne and I, um, yes. I was in a lineup, you know, sort of, kind of all nervous to meet royalty, you know, and uh, she's going along there, you know, she's terribly like that. <laughs> she speaks a bit like a man, you know, a bit like Rosemary. And um, she came along to me and she took my hand. I said, hello, uh, I do an impression of your sister-in-law. I was all sort of, you know, and she said, um, yeah, she can't do one of me. Your nose isn't big enough. Mm. So she's obviously, you know, got a good sense of humour. Yeah. Thank heaven. And in the crying game, you were the one that said, I know oh, all yeah. there is to know. Have you seen the crying game? Yes, it's great. Amazing film, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I do all sorts for a living. <laughs> You're a singer, of course. I mean, Yeah, I started off in Crossroads. You've had hits. I did. I had a hit record because every time I arrived, I was in Crossroads. Do you remember Crossroads? Of course you remember Crossroads. You were in Crossroads. I was in Crossroads. I fell in love with Adam Chance. I had to snog him. Adam, I remember Adam, oh, real remember tongue, Adam Chance. Tongue down the throat, job. <laughs> No, it wasn't that one. Um, no, I was in Crossroads, and every time I appeared in the motel for my chalet key, I kept breaking into song, you see. More than in love. And then it got to number two in the charts. And, uh, you know, doing Crossroads, was, it was, I always say it was my debut into comedy, really. <laughs> because, you know, the programme was produced at such fast speed. They didn't have time to hardly to rehearse at all. Mm. And there was one scene, do you remember a, ca a character called Kath Brownlow? Remember Mrs Kath Brownlow? Kath Brownlow? Yeah, you remember her. Well, if you don't, anyway, there was a character called Kath Brownlow. And Mrs. Brownlow, one, in one of the scenes, was vacuuming away like this. And uh -huh. it was so noisy in the dress rehearsal. And in the end, the director said, Kath, Kath, will you stop the vacuuming? Stop the vacuuming. And his personal assistant ran on and said, Oh, I'm sorry, Mike, there's been a typing error. It should say Mrs. Brownlow hovering in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and that's...
the kind of thing that went on on Crossroads, honestly. Yeah. We were all drunk when we went on. Of Ooh. course. Yeah, and you also represented Britain in the Eurovision oh, Song Contest. I did, and it's on tonight. I mean, I feel... Yeah, I know. The results are coming through at 10 I know how they feel, you know, those people. I was in a group, and I was my first television, and there I was with my big boobs, and the other two girls, my sister and the other one, they're a bit flat-chested, you know. Yes. Poor things. And, um, and there I was, and they put me in this minimizer bra, which, was, which is a special bra to minimize you. And uh, what it sort of does is it's got, like, wire underneath, without going into the disgusting um, descriptions of it. Yes. It sort of, well it, well, it sort of pushes you down there. Oh, I know. So there I was, doing my dance routine. Like, what do you mean, you know? I know the feeling. <laughs> I've often pushed down there. Before. I've often pushed down there before. So, so I, oh, he's a tinker, isn't he? <laughs> but carry on. He's a pretty, and uh, it pushed me like that. And so I was doing this dance routine, but every time I lifted my arms, I was like, I've got love enough. Oh, this is big lumps under my arms. Because <laughs> it's got to go somewhere, hasn't it? It's indeed. You can't deposit matter where matter can't go. I've got all self-conscious now. You did say to me actually earlier on that you noticed that women in Northern Ireland have very big chests. I don't tell you everybody that. that. You did say that to me. You thought I wouldn't bring that up again. Well, I feel at home here, you know. I am oh. Irish descent and uh, my mum's Irish. And uh, yes, I feel at home here. I think all the girls are on a good diet. They all look very healthy, you know. And will you hear this? Paul McCartney is her cousin? Yeah. Paul Ooh! Then there's a fiver, Paul. What does that mean? What does that mean? To what does it mean like in Paul terms McCartney? of money? <laughs> no, what does it mean in terms of, you know, well, do you see him often? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, he's very helpful. And uh, when I first came to London, I, I had no piano. And uh, I rang him up and I said, can I come and use your piano in the office to write my songs? Mm. And the next day, he and Linda had sent around a little electric piano for me to use. Oh, that's nice. So he's always, you know, he's always helped out. And he's always ready with the advice, you know. He's always... Yeah. But he's, he's funny because he's like... He still, you know, he still wants to have hit records. He still cares so much about being successful. He's never let it slip, you know. Yeah. He still cares. He still wants to do it, which is great. He's not yeah. smelling the roses. He's not... No, no. And, he, and he's very down to earth. He's an ordinary, everyday... Multi-millionaire. <laughs> yeah. Just no, your common a garden millionaire. No, funny enough, I've talked to a couple of people who have met him. You know, not knew him well, but they, they and I bet they said he was a nice fella. He's they got did. good manners. They did actually, it. and as you know, people don't normally say that about very famous people. You know, sometimes they don't say that. No, you know? they don't. And no, because uh, a lot of very famous people of the rate of fame that he has tend not to be terribly nice yeah. at all to anyone that's not. But important. he's brought. He's, what's nice is he's brought his kids up. You know, with values. Um, you know, um, mm. they're not. They don't go around sort of bragging about who their father is. In fact, they're just very ordinary kids, you know, in a yeah. nice way, yeah. Yeah, but there's another connection too with Liverpool, of course. You wrote the theme song for Surprise, Surprise. Ew, don't tell everyone. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, I did. Um, still, it's funny, you know... Um, but that you could Philip, retire well, on Philip, that. Well, no, I couldn't retire on that, no. It was, it, it was a nice little owner, but um, when I very first went on, on LWT, I was dressed up as Scylla with the orange wig, and I was trying it out in the corridor, I was going... <laughs> Like this. And I had my nails on and I was just going, surprise, surprise. She walked down the corridor and she said, what are you doing here, Kate? And she didn't even recognise herself. Because she's got two singing voices, you see. She's got okay. the, anyone who had a heart could look at me. And then she goes, knowing I love you. <laughs> now you're going to have a little, you've got a little surprise for us. Uh -huh. Let me tell them what it is. In the meantime, thank you very much, Kate Robbins. Thank you. Now, Kate Robbins, come on. Thanks, mate. Right. Now here's something, here's something that you'll seldom hear. It isn't often that Silver Black is called upon to sing something of a classical nature. But by a leap of the imagination, we can make that happen right in front of your eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Robbins brings you Ave Maria, as Scylla would have it. Ha, ha, ha. 